the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil amen father we thank we thank you for letting uh, your holy spirit uh, move powerful in our lives Lord uh, Jesus, when you went up to heaven, before going up to heaven, you asked the disciples to wait for the power from heaven to come upon them. And they faithfully prayed and waited for uh, your Holy Spirit. And Lord, ever since uh, their life changed, the whole world changed. Today, as we meditate upon the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray that you may anoint, send the same anointing that you sent upon the apostles, that we may also be powerfully used by God for his glory and we bring glory to the mighty name of jesus amen dear heavenly father we thank you lord once again we thank you very much for this opportunity and thank you for this platform also and thank you for the zoom app and internet and we thank you lord for all that you're doing through us and through many people around the world and lord i give ourselves into your hands lord we pray that the spirit of the living god will continue to guide us, Lord. Hide us that you may be seen. Lower our face that your face may be seen. Lower our voice that your voice may be heard. Lord, strengthen us with your strength as we listen to your word. Open our hearts, open our minds. Heal us, deliver us, Lord. Transform us and make us a new creation, Lord. Fill us with your Holy Spirit and enable us to know the power of your Spirit in our lives and in our family and in our community, Lord. And I pray for all those who are watching. Fill all of them with your Holy Spirit. And I pray for all those who will be watching through the YouTube, Lord. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon them and power upon them, Lord. Anoint them powerfully. And I pray for the nations of the world. Let there be a mighty move of God's Spirit upon these nations. Lord, I pray this in the holy name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Let's all pray together. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Cover us with the blood of your son. Cover us with the blood of your son. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Build a wall of fire around us. Build a wall of fire around us. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Let your angels encamp around us a day yeah. and night. Let your angels encamp around us day and night. Come, Holy Spirit, lead us. Come, Holy Spirit, lead us. Come, Holy Spirit, empower us. Come, Holy Spirit, empower us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we were learning yesterday that uh, God should be glorified in the things that we do in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we were learning, uh, we were learning that uh, uh, there are times that we might miss giving glory to God. Mm. And we were also learning there are times when others also may not give glory to God, but may give glory to us. That I, ignorantly it happens and sometimes uh, it happens repeatedly. You know, these things don't, uh, you, nothing will go wrong. If somebody says once or twice that that father is very anointed and uh, many other things. But if repeatedly it is said, you know, God withdraws the anointing from that person's life. The reason is because, why does God withdraw the anointing? So many men and women of God we see, once upon a time they moved very powerfully. Today we see they are not moving that powerfully. The reason why God has withdrawn certain anointings is because God wants to save our soul. Mm. The ultimate plan of God is to save our soul. Mm. So he, he doesn't want us to be included in the list of Satan and his army. Mm. To save our soul, many times he doesn't give us certain charisms. Certain time he gives us some anointing, test our heart, and then he withdraws that anointing. Mm. So that is because he wants our soul to be saved. Mm. Not for us to be destroyed, you know, mm. but that our soul may be saved. Yeah. And I remember the Lord told one person, I'm able to heal all the sick in the world. I'm able to heal all the sick in the world. But I don't find an instrument humble enough. Mm. I do not find an instrument humble enough. 
So that the, there are, see, when a child asks uh, the parents for certain gifts, if they're not of that age, we don't give. Right. So we know if we give, it can create a problem for that person, for our children. Yeah. So in the same way, uh, the Lord does not give certain gifts to us because he knows that we will not be able to handle it in a proper way, mm. in wisdom and humility. Mm. For our safety. Yeah. Because we are ultimately accountable to God. Mm. So that is why we have to be very careful. I remember many years, so I think once I've told, but I don't remember what contest I had told, but this contest is beautiful. Once many years ago, we were having a prayer in, uh, in Orissa and uh, we, we were singing and worshipping the Lord and I, I, I was given the opportunity to share the word of God and I, I said the word of God and there was one girl who had a very beautiful gift of uh, prophecy. Mm. Very deep and very powerful gifting she had those days. Mm. So uh, just before she started praying, you know, uh, prophesizing, she just prayed for us and she prayed for me one very interesting sentence, you know. Mm. And I, I don't believe that she herself prayed by herself. It was mm. a prophetic praying, Holy Spirit praying through her. Mm. And the words were very interesting. The words were, hide your servant and manifest yourself. Mm. Yeah, that is a so, very... Yeah, yeah. So when, 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 when she prayed like that, you know, she prayed in Oriya, you know. Hmm. Uh, 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 keep your servant hidden and, and manifest yourself. Hmm. And when she said that, no, I felt the power of God, but I did not agree with her mentally. Hmm. I said, no, I, I'm not manifesting myself. Hmm. I'm not showing off. I'm just simply saying the word of God. Hmm. But many years later, but many, many years later, I understood what she said was true. Mm. Those, those days, I did not understand. Mm. But, you know, when she said that I felt the power of God, that was actually for me. Mm. So that is why sometimes when, 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 when God works through us, you know, sometimes we also, you know, work. Mm. We also manifest our ego, our, our, our ego and our, our mind. And our, our, all that, uh, what you call, all that uh, uh, judgmental attitude that we have, that all come out, you know, when we uh, serve the Lord sometimes. Mm. So that is what I learned. Uh, that was many years ago. and uh, But I understood only many years later. So now today we look into uh, what the Bible says about the what the anointing does. Mm. What the power of God does. That we find that in Isaiah chapter 61. Actually, verse. Yeah, verses one uh, onwards we'll be reading. So I, if you don't mind, I can read. Okay. Yeah, yeah sure, sure. So we, we'll be going a long way. So we'll be just reading it out. Yeah. So this, this is a prophetic word about the, uh, about the Messiah. Uh -huh. Prophet Isaiah saw this and he wrote down. And this is the word which Jesus read. We find that in Luke chapter 4, when he went to the synagogue, he took the Old Testament the scroll, opened up Isaiah 61, and read and sat down. Mm -hmm. And he said, today it is fulfilled, and he sat down. Mm -hmm. So this, this is a prophetic word about Jesus, about the anointing of the Lord upon his life, and what the anointing will do, and what the anointing does. We have heard this 61 many times, but let's look into 61 with a different eye. So let us look into a different angle about it. So now we see here very interestingly that this speaks about Jesus, about the power of God that will work through Jesus. That is one. And second thing, this teaches us what the power of God does through our lives also. So when we look into the words, it's very interesting. We can learn many things. So 61 verses 1. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me. So when the spirit of God is upon us, 
we get anointed. And that is why Jesus said, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So when we, when we get filled with the Holy Spirit, we get anointed. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. Mm. That's the next verse is very interesting. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed. Mm. So when God sends us, he anoints us. Mm. So every husband can be anointed when he enters the sacrament of marriage. Every wife can be anointed when she enters the sacrament of marriage also. Because without grace and without the divine en enablement, it is not possible to lead a family life according to the word of God. Neither according to the teaching of the church. And I have noted this in one of my cousin's marriage, you know. And as the uh, functions were going on, and my cousin, when, she, when he put that, uh, what that uh, on the neck, they tie one, uh, forgot what is the name of that. They, in the marriage, you know, they tie one. Uh, tali. That? Yeah, tali. Tali, Tali. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Tali they tie, you know. And when, when, when he was tying, just he tied the Tali, I just felt the Holy Spirit descending on them. I, I could feel that. So those who get married may not feel that. But I, I felt that the Holy Spirit came upon them. And today when you look into the life, they, they went through a lot of prosperity. They went through a lot of difficulties, a lot of troubles. But they, they have remained strong. So the anointing, the God anoints not only for uh, preaching the ministry of the Lord, but for all other purposes also. When God calls you for some purpose, he gives you the strength, he gives you the anointing for that purpose. And that is why even today, many, many Christians are called for business. And when they are called, God anoints them. There is an anointing. When God, has, when God placed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in a secular palace, God anointed them. God anointed Daniel when he appointed him, appointed him in, 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 in the enemy's palace. Mm. And because of the anointing, he prospered. Mm. Same thing with King David, we see he was anointed. When Samuel poured up the oil upon him, the Holy Spirit came upon King David. And he was so anointed, the Bible says that he won all the victories because the Lord God was with him. Hmm. So he was anointed to be a king. So that, there are various anointings that God is releasing among people. And because we, are, we do not know it, we are not able to tap and get into the fullness of that anointing. The business, you know, there are a lot of businesses that are run by secular people also. They are led by the spirit of God because they, it's a kingly anointing on businessmen. It's a kingly anointing. Why? Because they are taking care of thousands of families under them. So the, there, is, there is an anointing that God releases upon people. So um, um, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me and has sent me. So when God sends us according to his plan, he anoints us. So receive that anointing. And renew that anointing. He, he has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed. So why good news has to be told to the oppressed? To heal them, to deliver them, and to make them a new creation. Now, after so many years walking with God and having uh, conducted small, small programs, I've learned one thing. The effectiveness and that bring changes in people's heart is not that how we preach. It is not how we present the word of God. It is not the stories that we tell. It is not how we tell it. It is not the what kind of tone we use. 
it has nothing to do regarding healing an oppressed person it is the power of god at work it is never as we we, we are thinking of because the talk was very powerful that person changed it is not because the talk was powerful because the holy spirit was working and the every the words that the man or woman spoke was powered by the holy spirit sometimes we think it is because of the stories we tell and 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 the way we present it if there was anybody who was not a powerful preacher uh, what you call worldly point of view that is billy graham hmm you know many many people journalists have asked him you know they asked him why did god choose you because his preaching was never out of uh, eloquent wisdom it never was out of human wisdom but the power of god hmm. the, it was it was the power of god he had an experience of the holy spirit coming upon him like a wind when many years ago so people change not because the of our, of our presentation because it's powered by the holy spirit so oppressed people can only change can be delivered by the power of god so sometimes we think oh because we spoke in this language that language we spoke like this we told beautiful stories we encourage them this that all we are thinking like that human being you know? so when the holy spirit join us what happens when i say jesus saves you the holy spirit tell through my mouth jesus saves you and that saves the person so all the years walking little little with the lord i found that is never our words there are so many eloquent preachers on the web so many of them are on tv you know so people get converted people get changed only when the power of god comes into their life so that is i really i've learned it i'm learning still learning that it is not by might not by power but by his spirit says the lord it is good to have a good presentation it's good to tell stories it's good to speak in a proper way so that people can understand that's all good with that you need the power of god yeah in fact uh, there is this man i don't know whether you've heard about uh, it came in shalom tv uh, moses is Mo, he's called he's called uh, moses of northeast have you heard him No, no, I, I, I haven't heard. He is a very interesting person. Oh, you, you mean the person with six children? No, 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 no. He is not a no, no. not married. Ah, oh. ah, okay, okay. Oh, so he is otherwise uh, his name. They call him the locals call him Bai, Bai. Yeah, yeah. Okay, he apparently uh, was uh, very anointed, very powerful. He went to become a priest, but then Lord told him, "Not priesthood is not your calling." but uh, later the bishop uh, gave him the permission to carry the holy eucharist with him right because of his uh, you know commitment to evangelism right uh, he his mode of operandi was like this is like was like this that he goes to a village he goes to a village and uh, uh, once he enters the village he goes to a secluded place pray for couple of days Two three days he just in in you know silence he prays. Then he comes to the village and he calls everybody to come for meeting. Mighty revelation you know revelation of uh, yeah it's prayed by prayed by yeah revelation of the Holy Spirit in the sense healing deliverance massive you know and then he preaches the word of God. Then he spends some time there with the villagers. Then he goes to the next village. that is how he you know used to evangelize yeah. apparently one day it happened so so happened that he had to cross uh, the river it was uh, flooded it was overflowing and uh, you know uh, so people who were around him with him said uh, you can't cross because river is overflowing 
he said no we have to go because the lord asked me to go and uh, he ha always carries a stick with him he uh, put the stick onto the water and water separated and he went through the water <laughs> he went through the water and that's why he called they, they call him moses <laughs> like red seal Nice. And then he said, then he was planning to go to Sri Lanka, and then the Lord gave him, asked him, "You don't go now. First, you go and meet everyone who supported you, and tell goodbye to them because you are not going to come back. You are not going to meet them again." Then he understood that it's time for him to go back to heaven, and he did. Uh, he you know he went and met and spent time with those people who you know supported him. and uh, after some time i think if he went to sri lanka that's what i understand then there he passed away what i'm saying is that a man who was probably and he came to you know his uh, rather uh, he became popular after his death because of the media and and other things but there he has done amazing work uh, you know work of the lord especially with the power of the word demonstrating the power of the holy spirit so uh, like that uh, there are many people uh, who work silently but then the lord lord's power is been manifested in their lives uh, very visibly yes so that's what i said uh, we, we can have the what we call now we have lot of skit lot of songs lot of music so many things we have it's all good yeah With all this you need the power of god yes so that is thing something that we should not miss if some, when they, when there is a skit taking place people don't get converted because they saw the skit or they heard the dialogues or they saw that all emotion that was manifested there it's not because of that even while watching the skit if it is anointed by god uh, people watching the skit will be touched by the power of god and they change so that this reality we have to come to my husband will not change by all the things i say until the power holy spirit speaks through my lips my wife will not change until the holy spirit speaks through me for that i have to have fellowship with the holy spirit intimacy with the holy spirit and walk with him spend time in prayer and god's spirit will work through my lips my children will change and the power of god will move so what a what a struggle people are taking how to how much struggle we are doing And we get more angry. The more we advise, we ourselves get more angry. Hmm. Yeah. The more you advise, the more anger, anger you become, and that is what's happening to so many people. So that that I've learned is it is not our words, it is not the way we stand, way we move. It is the power of God that flows out that changes people. So Jesus says, He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to deliver those who are oppressed. Now, oppression is a very serious issue. Only the power of God can deliver. Then again, the next word says to bind up the broken hearted. So those who are having inner wounds inside them, this power of God can heal. As it can deliver an oppressed person, in the same way it can bind the broken hearted. So inner wounds are not something new. It was there in the Old Testament times also. it is not something that the charismatics discovered it is already it is already there we find it here very clearly prophet prophetically prophet isaiah saw when the power of god flows out of the messiah the messiah anointing a broken heart hearted people will be healed so in a really takes place when the power of god move in that direction it is not because the inner healing retreat was made very scientifically and very friendly and all that and one day i had a shocking message i got you know a friend of mine is very gifted and uh, he works among priests and all so one day he came home here and he told me that you will conduct inner healing retreats so that's something that i never had in my mind i never had in my mind but i have noted that when i talk to people when i pray for them they get healed the inner wounds are healed that i have noted person to person when you talk to people many people get healed internally so he said and one thing which he said surprised me he said 
that will be real inner healing retreat that will be real you know so i thought i wondered so many inner healing retreat takes place are they not real or are we doing inner healing retreats because everybody is doing i have not ventured into it because i have not led by the holy spirit a brother told gave me one message like that that uh, he said that will be real inner healing retreat then i said so many retreats going on they are not real so just because somebody is doing everybody should not be doing that we have to be careful so we see here when the anointing comes oppressed are set free broken hearted are healed they are their life is again bound together by the power of god and that's what the holy spirit's power does the next word to proclaim to proclaim liberty to the captives so those who are in bondages they are set free when the holy spirit proclaims through our mouth they become free so that is what the power of god does sets those who are captives free we know in the life of jesus we have seen so horrible condition of many people they were all bound and they were living in the cemetery and now jesus with one word delivered those people i remember hearing a testimony of a man in south america so one day one one lay person lay minister lay, lay, lay person was preaching the word of god and he prayed for a lot of people it became night 12 o'clock so then what happened um somebody brought one man to him to pray and he looked he had lot of beard hair had become very big he looked very shabby and dirty and the brother says i was very tired i just laid my hands on him and said in jesus name be healed and delivered he was very tired himself so as he prayed this man suddenly felt some kind of power and he ran away and he ran away and ran to a paddy field and he remained there for many days screaming and each time he was screaming demonic spirits used to come out of his body he was possessed about 5000 demonic spirits in him oh for many days he had remained in the ground in that field and he was screaming and shouting and the demonic spirits were coming out of his body one by one one by one one by one many months later in one me- one meeting with his brother was leading a man came to meet him very clean shaved tip top on coat and all his foot and he told do you remember me hmm so this is only the power of god can do this brother was very tired also he simply prayed and left so power of god can set captives free so not our eloquent wisdom but the power of god and again bible says here to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners release to the prison those who are in prison of fear of lust of pride of anxiety and worries and lot of kind of fears those are prisoners those have made themselves prisoner it's very difficult to bring out a person who has made himself a prisoner it is very very difficult only the power of god can do it to bring them out of that prison that they are in to proclaim the year of the lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our god to what does it mean to declare about the second coming of christ to declare the coming judgment you need the power of god the power of god works to declare the judgment that coming that is coming and the and the time that is coming the day that is coming from the lord then the next word is very interesting to comfort all who mourn Super. to comfort all who mourn now see the power of god has the ability to comfort a person who is mourning so that's what the power of god does then the next verse is very interesting to provide for all those to provide for those who mourn in zion to give them a garland instead of ashes so there are people who are so sorrowful and so sad and depressed they can only get ashes out of life but when the power of god comes 
they are given a garland. So only the power of God can do this. The next verse is the oil of gladness instead of mourning. The oil of gladness instead of mourning. So the power of God will release a joy and a gladness into us. All those who mourn. The next word is very interesting. The mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. A mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. I always tell people, if you belong to Jesus, you should be able to praise God. Because a mantle of praise will be upon you. See, those who belong to Jesus, how they sing? How they worship the Lord? So you, there is a mantle of praise that comes on us. For all those who come to the Lord, all those who have received the anointing, there's a mantle of praise upon where you can praise God 24 hours vocally also. Not for one day, two days, for 10 years you can do. Continuous vocally. No matter where you are, where you are going, you can keep praising the Lord vocally also. Some people say you cannot do, you can do. So the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. Now what is a faint spirit? A faint spirit is someone who faints, mm. not able to face the, uh, the reality of life, not able to go forward, feeling very weak and tired when you think of going forward. So the anointing will come and change that. That's the power of God. And the next word is very beautiful and powerful. They will be called oaks of righteousness. Who will be called? The ones who are oppressed. The ones who are captives. The ones who are in prison. The ones who live mourning. The ones who lived on ashes. Ones who had faint spirit will be called oaks of righteousness. See how the power of God comes into our life and makes us oaks of righteousness. And the next word says, the planting of the Lord. So the anointing came from Jesus to the apostles. They became oaks of righteousness. They became, they were planted by the Lord. What for? To display his glory. To display his glory. So just think about the apostles. Jesus had the anointing. The anointing came upon the apostles. And each one of them became oaks of righteousness. When you look into the history of the church, you can see so many saints. They became oaks of righteousness. Not because of their education. Not because of their past background. Not because their parents were good people. They became because of the anointing. Because of the anointing upon their lives. Sometimes we, we, we also know, sometimes we, you know, we, 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 we have some presumption in our mind, you know. We say if you are from a good family background, then you will be spiritual people. So many well, men and women of God have come out of families which are not at all uh, worthy according to our standard. And you know, Jesus in his time visited families which were not in a proper order. He visited people whose foundation was not righteous. Look at the ministry of Jesus. When I was in Orissa, I used to visit many families, you know. And 100% of the families that Holy Spirit led me to visit them. I, those days, I did not know that it is a ministry of Jesus. I did not know. I used to visit many, many families. Many years later, I heard a man preaching, teaching about the ministry of Jesus. Then I remembered many of the, almost all the families I visited in Orissa were family with some problem in the foundation. They were never wanted in the church. They never came to church. No, holy people never visited them. Righteous people never went to them or met them. They were all holy people. All dance, this, that and all. But you know, as we walked into their homes, everything stopped, everything changed. 
they were all difficult people dysfunctional people having wrong relationships not right uh, among men also but those people we, we, we used to go, I used to go there and you know, I used to love them you know and I, I remember one lady told me uh, brother I, I appreciate the boldness that you you barge into a house mm. you barge into a house and she said she, and uh, she, you barge into a house I said that's because of the anointing of God on our lives and these families nobody wanted them so there are so many families like this you know we have to think about them we are anointed for that purpose we have to love the sinners you have to love sinners without loving sinners sinners will not come to you why sinners are not coming because we don't love them when you love them god will send sinners into our life so i used to barge into the family and one more thing i want to tell you very interesting point one family told me brother when we see you we think we are our own i'm i'm i'm, I'm from a kerala background there they may be anglo indians or hindi community they they tell me that you know why because those who are born again born of the spirit they don't belong to any language they are really born of the spirit they don't belong to any particular language so we Well, when you go to Hindi community, we speak in Hindi and we talk like them, and we encourage them, and we become part of them. When you go to an Anglo Indian family, we speak like that, and we um, we manifest the power. The God manifests His power through us, and we speak things that encourages them. And all this family were dysfunctional, but we never spoke about the judgment of God. But they all changed. <laughs> Many, many of them, or most of them, they change. They, 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 God gave them a chance to know His love. So the oaks of who became the oaks of righteousness? Those who are oppressed, those who are broken-hearted, those who are captives, those who are prisoners. They become oaks of righteousness because of the power of God that flows from Jesus, from the Messiah. And not only that, they, they became the planting of the Lord. Lord planted them. Peter became the Pope. Saint Paul became, you can call him theologian. Each one were planted by the Lord. And so many of the saints we remember, they are they planted by the Lord. That's how we remember them. And what for to display His glory? To display His glory. So God makes them oaks of righteousness. He plants them to display His glory. So only the power of God can do these things. Our eloquent wisdom, our way of talking, uh, the best performance will not change people. Only words powered by the Holy Spirit can change people. that thing i am realize i have realized it i'm still continuing to realize because there is a tendency to forget this there is a tendency among us that we might forget this and we think if i tell more if i call many times that person will change but we have to be powered by the holy spirit so they will be called oaks of righteousness the planting of the lord to display his glory now verses 4 is very interesting where you can find where you can find something wonderful it says here they shall build up ancient ruins that means they will heal the past generations the anointing of the lord will heal the past generations they will they shall raise up the former devastations they shall repair the ruined cities the devastations of many generation so that the power of god can heal the power of god can heal the past generations i i remember once uh, amla gave one word of knowledge in one adoration time i am let's say 300 years ago 300 years ago some incident she said and the lord is healing the translator 
he thought it's 30 years you know so he said 30 years i said no no 300 years so the past generation the devastation of past generation the lord can heal one example i tell you what i was reading a testimony of one man who gets angry when he gets anger the anger is very strong and very powerful sometimes you know this kind of people when they get angry what they do they won't remember also and what they say also so he was struggling in this area and he met a man who prayed for him and revealed to him 700 years 700 years ago one of his forefather who was a spanish soldier had killed a pregnant woman from that time this kind of bondage started functioning in this family now here you see they shall build up ancient ruins they shall raise up the former devastations so it will build up again they shall repair the ruined cities the devastations of many generations so the power of god has the power to heal the past also and that's the anointing that flowed out of jesus the messiah anointing is anointing that can heal the past generations and then the next words are very interesting and the, uh, yeah they shall repair the ruined cities the devastation of many generations now this this may not be physical when god says to jeremiah you shall pull down cities it does not mean that cities the physically will go and pull down it is a spiritual breakthrough that will take place through his prayer and through the word that he will speak so the anointing of the lord does wonderful things for, for our past generation too and verses 5 is wonderful strangers shall stand and feed your flocks what does it mean because of the anointing lot of people will help you foreigners shall till your land and dress your wines because of the anointing so when you look into divine retreat center you know you have people coming there who are carpenters who are uh, plumbers who are electricians who are drivers cook the various kinds of people have come to divine i remember the earlier years and all there was no proper place to sleep and stay also but still people used to come why they were coming they were not coming because of the uh, directors they were coming because of the anointing because of the because of the anointing they were drawn to come to the center and work some are working since 30 years Some are working since 25 years. Some are working till 15 years. They full heartedly they are doing what God has appointed them to do. Here you see, strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. Foreigners shall till your land and dress your wines. So there will be people to have look at King David. If you look into the Chronicles, you can see various kinds of people came to help him, and they were all expert in their own field. They were all expert in their own field, and we find that uh, because, why why they came because of the anointing that is upon King David. So when we have the anointing on us, people will come to help us. They will tell, "I will do it." They will tell, "I will do it." We will do it. They will say. But you shall. Then again, the word of God says, "But you shall be called priests of God. You shall be named ministers of our God." because of the anointing because of the power of god new or look and think about prem by uh, you speaking about prem by just think about him what he was called you shall enjoy the wealth of the nations and in the riches you shall glory so a lot of support will come because of the anointing now somebody will be thinking Oh, then if I get a lot of anointing, uh, I can get a lot of support. No, that, that is not the way to get support. The support is to get into the purposes of God. 
Sometimes we think if you get more power, you will get more money. So when you have the anointing on your life, when you go to the purposes of God, the support will come. So that is why, again, as you keep on reading, you can find beautiful things mentioned. Then you can, I'll keep reading. Yeah. Because their shame was double and dishonor was proclaimed as their Lord. Therefore, they shall possess a double portion. Everlasting joy shall be theirs. So this is what the power of God does. Their shame was double. And they were, the dishonor was proclaimed as their lot. They were told, lifelong, you will be like this only. There will be no change in you. And the power of God came and changed their life. And Bible says here, therefore they shall possess a double portion. Everlasting joy shall be theirs. So this is what the power of God does in our life. That's what you see. The anointing that flows from the head, Jesus, into our life, creates these things in our life. So anybody got any questions, you can ask. Please uh, unmute yourself and uh, ask, speak. Yes, Shriju. Uh, brother, how can um, uh, ordinary people get anointed uh, by the Holy Spirit? Yeah, yeah. I, as I've said many times, when we get filled with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will release an anointing on our life. So for that, you need to pray. When you get up in the morning, evening, afternoon, you need to pray to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So when you pray to be filled with the Holy Spirit and you experience the filling of the Holy Spirit, the power of God will be released in you. And that is how you receive the anointing. When you become hungry, you receive that anointing. But then, many times when you go for a retreat, because you are thirsting, because you are desiring, and because others are praying for you, when you go for a retreat or go for a, a charismatic program, which is powerfully anointed, you can also receive the anointing. When you receive the body and blood of Christ, when you have a desire for the power of God to be filled with the Holy Spirit, you can receive the anointing even when you receive the body and blood of Christ. There's a question on the uh, chat. When we pray in yeah. time, do we, get to the, do we get filled with the Holy Spirit? Yeah, when we pray in tongues, we get filled with the Holy Spirit. But with that also, there is a power of God within us which gets activated when we pray in tongues. But then for that, you have to pray. You have to spend some time. Just praying in tongues for one minute, two minutes will not uh, create that kind of atmosphere in you. I think uh, I, yeah. first step is uh, to have that desire to be filled with the Holy Spirit. A desire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That if, uh, and our prayer comes from that desire uh, to be filled rather than, uh, you know, uh, asking... Uh, Asking, uh, you know, praying for a few minutes or I think that desire, if you really uh, ask God to build that desire, you will, your prayer also will shift from, from an ordinary prayer to a powerful prayer where you will want to have the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, the power of God will be released in us. So that is the key. Desires have to become prayers. Prayers have to become our desire. So then we will be filled with the Holy Spirit and then we know the power of God. Yeah. Um, Brother Anthony? Brother, uh, yeah. Yes. I have a uh, small question. Uh, when we pray in tongues, right? Yeah. Uh, there are some interpretation of certain tongues, correct? Uh, how do we... Yeah. Uh, get the confirmation and sometimes uh, see I pray with a prayer partner who we uh, you know uh, meet every day like uh, connect every day on like a half for 30 minutes and we keep praying in tongues and try to yeah. interpret it right yeah, yeah. Uh, and sometimes we both 
get different messages but sometimes it's bang on uh, how yeah. do we develop it and how do we um, uh, come to terms that it is god conveying certain message yeah, yeah. actually uh, the, this thing the subject we have spoken once and not only spoken we also demonstrated it also where uh, many of us spoke in tongues and we got interpretation those who got interpretation were able to share can you, can you repeat the last part, last sentence which you yeah, said? Yeah, so the last part was that we both sometimes get different messages, okay? Uh, okay. Or a different vision for that for that particular uh, uh, tongue or the, you know? Yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, uh, so when, uh, how, how do we go forward with it? Because we want to ensure that, you know, we are bang on in terms of... Uh, uh, confirming that this is from the Lord and this yeah, is yeah, yeah. the true meaning of this uh, particular tongue. No, no, both, the, the both will not be opposite, no? Mm, yeah, both will not be opposite, but when yeah, we yeah. pray, uh, yeah, how yeah. do we, uh, like, I mean, how do we confirm See, when, when yeah, we get yeah, a vision or when we get a word, how do we confirm yeah, yeah. that it is from the Lord? Yeah, yeah. See, my, I, sometimes when you pray in a group and when the interpretation comes, Sometimes yeah. two interpretation can come also. Mm -hmm. That is also from the Lord. It comes sometimes two interpretation also come. For a for a particular. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It comes. I, I have also noted when my father was leading, um, okay. when uh, the interpretation two person brought the interpretation, the mm -hmm. both were different, but uh, it can come that way also. So it's not a wrong thing, but it should not be opposite. Uh, it should not be opposite. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It should that be on a thing. similar line, basically. Yeah, line, line upon line. Yeah, precept upon precept. And uh, I, I would like to add one more thing is that, uh, see, once uh, when, you, when you try to uh, fit everything in our, you know, that our understanding of being right, we have a certain understanding, okay, this has to be like this, then only it will become, it makes sense. That, mm -hmm. that rigidity, I think we should let go because God can turn even the worst situation into your good. We might think this is how it will work. It should work. And you become so rigid and rigid uh, uh, to that. And you don't be become flexible for the Holy Spirit to work. See, the Holy Spirit, you know, I, you know, objective is to make you, uh, make you like uh, Jesus. So that the rigidity we should let go. It recently to us, uh, you know, we were doing some work uh, in the restaurant, okay, and we were uh, making the furniture, and Sharu and I were very particular that uh, the seat has to be in a particular design. Mm. We were so upset the carpenter in a different design. So we were, mm -hmm. you know, uh, so, uh, you know, we were complaining, we were uh, grumpy about it, all these things. Mm. And uh, you know, according to us, that will not fit in. That was our idea. But later, when the fin work got over and we set it up, it turned out to be the best in that lot out of all the furniture made. You know, so God was showing us that, you know, it is He and we've been praying that Lord take control, take control, you do everything. So when we ask Him to do, con you know, be in control and we try to push our way inside, you know, thinking that this is, that is right. So God was teaching both of us that he is he is in control, not we. Mm -hmm. The GTT factor in our lives sometimes can block the anointing, and we should be flexible. If it if it does not happen this way, okay, let go. That let going uh, is, is a big attitude which I have learned in the recent past, and it has helped me a lot uh, to you know let go, especially when you deal with children. You know, my children sometimes mm -hmm. work uh, you know work exactly opposite to my expectation. So that kind mm -hmm. of you know, God is breaking actually my pride and my mm -hmm. uh, through this, uh, through this, uh, you know, experience. Correct, correct. And uh, <clears throat> brother, like, have you experienced this that sometimes when you get a vision or any message, it can be from your mind or from something that is coming from your spirit uh, and it's not from the Holy Spirit. But uh, at the same time, you feel, oh, it is from the Lord, right? Uh, how do we deviate that? How we separate our thoughts? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that, so that, that's why I said no. That there is no shortcut here. Mm. There is no shortcut here. We have to have an intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. 
And I, I think I've told earlier also when you have judgmental attitude inside you, mm. when you have a pride inside you, when you have certain inner wounds inside you, it's not mm. ever possible to interpret the visions in an accurate way. Mm-hmm. Because of this uh, judgmental attitude within us. Okay. So what I'm suggesting is that with every message from the Lord, there will be a peace that surpasses understanding. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That is one. And with every message and revelation of the Lord, there should be a tangible presence of the Lord. Amen. So these things we have to follow. And we have to see whether, as we learn, as you walk with the Lord, then see whether it is scriptural or not. They have the sense of, of the old thought about these things or not. So all that thing, when we refer, we come to And once you get into the flow, nothing can stop you. Yes, so this, this, the starting trouble is there. Now all of us have a starting trouble. Starting trouble, yes. Yeah. yes. So the problem is what, see, like, you know, in our prayer group, we, we used to sit down and pray and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to us uh, what are the things we have to pray this coming week. Mm-hmm. So there are hundreds of uh, prayer requests to appear in either through vision or through the audible voice, or through the mm-hmm. word of God, and we used to note it down, and we used to pray for one week. Okay, mm-hmm. then here, there are some persons in our group who are afraid to say, thinking that it might be wrong. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what happens when you have a fear? You, 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 don't, you don't express it, don't say it. Yes. Okay, now the, the, then I should tell them, see, now we are getting this messages not to take a decision. Correct. Not for a decision making. The purpose of the messages is to pray. Mm-hmm. What is there if it becomes wrong? Yeah. Say the yeah that's my, that's the, been my fear too because sometimes I've faltered and then I'm like, I think I should stop. <laughs> you know, I shouldn't uh, I like so that kind of thing. I think blocked even me from yeah. praying uh, yeah, or yeah, depending yeah. on what I see. So like, yeah. yeah. yeah so. Correct. No, no, the things that you see, you write down, note it down again and mm. again, read it again and again, mm. and you see while, while thinking about it and reading whether you feel the presence of the Lord or not. Yeah, those things you have to do, and you, you have to take a risk, you have to step out to find out. Amen. Yes. Uh, so you have to do these things, then slowly, slowly, it become, you'll get it clear, you'll become, it'll become more clear, things will mm. become more clearer. But praying in tongues, when you pray personal in tongues for a long period of time, the, the messages come, you can get it more accurately. Amen. Yes. Yeah. Reading the word of God also for more time can get the messages more accurately. I remember when I used to spend three hours praying in tongues. When I used to see people, some messages I used to get, 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 get about them. But if I don't spend that much time in praying in tongues, I was not getting. Mm-hmm. So what I found is that, yeah, when you pray in tongues, Praying only half an hour with a prayer partner it won't strengthen you. Yes. But it will encourage you to pray. Yeah. Strengthening, encouraging is too different. When you pray alone, you are strengthened. When you pray with others, you are encouraged. Yes, correct. So you praying alone is one key thing to grow yeah. in this gift of praying in tongues. It's like a dynamo. When you pray in tongues, the power of God gets uh, what's activated. And even rosary also. Those are filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Those who are filled with the Holy Spirit, I have noted sometimes in certain preaching, while I'm preaching, I'm some preaching in some retreat, you will feel some kind of block and the power of God is not flowing. I simply go and pray one rosary and again the power of God starts flowing. Amen. Yeah. But you have to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Baptism mm-hmm. of the Holy Spirit is something all of us have to experience. This, having saying that only the Holy Spirit is there within me is not enough. We have to mm-hmm. be filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Amen. That's a very beautiful advice. And, uh, you know, we should be people, especially this Bible study, uh, you know, group. One thing which uh, which we wanted to pass on is that we should not be just uh, like ordinary people. We say that I finished my personal prayer, one hour personal prayer, and I will do the rest uh, 20 hours, whatever I like. That should not be the attitude. We should not be yeah. just people who say that, you know, I read 15 minutes Bible and then we, you know, I'm done with the today's task. We should be people always, as St. Paul says, you know, continuously be on prayer. And that is the best way to pray is with the Holy Spirit. We should be people who learn the Bible and teach others to do. So, which means that 24 hours, our consciously and unconsciously, we are, uh, you know, with the Holy Spirit. So, that kind of a mode we should get in. 
need not be only with the set spending time in prayer so every time there is a you know amount there is a time of praise there is a time of uh, prayer there's a time of intercession there are times of time of thanksgiving all should come into that is the that is where we should graduate to that is what we should desire once we desire that i think the lord's anointing will increase in us and the lord will start using us powerfully Okay. okay. So, uh, yeah, brother. Yeah, brother. Uh, we... Yeah, yeah. I like to. Add, any, anybody else? Yeah, somebody else is also. You know, has raised their hand. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What uh, is that, brother Anthony? Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to know this. Uh, spending daily time with the Word of God will also help to increase the presence of the Holy Spirit, right? Yes. Yes. Okay, brother. Thank you. There are two reasons. Number one is because when you read the Word of God, you get cleansed. Okay. you become clean once you get into the flow of reading the word of god the word of god will clean you and second thing it will stir up the presence of god within us yeah this is said my the word yeah. the word that i speak a spirit and life yesterday yesterday i was listening to an interview of a guy who became catholic from pentecost he was telling very beautiful explanation of this he is telling today the catholic church is the only church in the world who has got the word and the flesh meaning the body be word becoming flesh so the but the catholics today do not understand the word they only know the you know word in flesh and that the reason why nothing is happening when they receive the holy communion is because they do not understand what they are receiving and uh, this is the analogy uh, you know which uh, which which i developed it is like this suppose if pope francis is coming to your house you are very excited because why is you know pope francis you have heard about him you have you know read his article you have seen him in tv what if you do not know him at all you do not know him at all and he comes to your house you do not know the importance of the person who is coming into your house this is exactly happens when we do not know the word of god the most important person is coming into our heart that is jesus in 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 flesh but we do not know the value of jesus who is coming in flesh because we do not know the word the word only explains who jesus is the word only explains you know what jesus has done the word only explains what the character of jesus and how you can relate to him so this has to go together so this is an opportunity for us to understand this realities if you are missing if you are not experiencing the power in the holy eucharist try start reading the word and then attend the holy eucharist you will see a massive exp difference in your experience of the power of the holy eucharist uh, when we attend so this is something which i find very useful uh, you know to share in the group and i pray that we will uh, you know we will all be empowered by the power of the holy spirit through the eucharist yeah. praise the lord praise the lord yeah, yeah actually i just want to remind you all that uh, icr 61 we went till uh, uh one to four but then i would suggest you all i uh, want to five or six we went uh, seven to 11 you should be reading it should read it and you can see uh, what the lord is saying and not only what lord is saying someone who gets anointed what he, he is saying so we can verse 10 says that i will greatly rejoice in the lord my whole being shall exalt in my god for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation and the verse 11 is very important for as the earth brings forth its shoots and as the garden causes what is sown in it to spring up so the lord god will cause righteousness and grace to spring up before all the nations and that's what the power of god will do so you all should read it uh, the 61 read it many times that you understand what actually it's let the holy spirit guide you all so we, anybody any other question okay so we will all pray uh, we will all pray okay and as i as i say earlier also uh, when you get any revelation a word a, a revelation a message anything just say it okay you you learn by saying and you flow in the spirit so by that you get more uh, you get into more, what you call like you are seeking the kingdom of god and his righteousness when when you when you flow with the holy spirit what is revealed to you so we will all pray and un unmute and open your mouth and we we'll just spend about 5 minutes praising the lord and worshiping him praying in tongues also and let the lord be let's encourage one another 
Thank you. Let's all pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Let us share what the Lord is revealing in our hearts. The, the Lord is healing. The Lord is healing many fears, you know, many fears of the unknown. Uh, the many fears that we had regarding spirituality, uh, the, the many fears that we had regarding moving in the power of God, uh, many fears that we had. The Lord is hearing that those kind of fears and they're hearing some kind of fears of using the charism. The Lord is hearing that fears. And Lord is wiping away some tears, you know, connected with the small, small ministries that we have done and something connected with that, the Lord is seeing uh, many our uh, tears, you know, is wiping away the tears. And Lord is also healing those who are active in the, some ministries, uh, many things you have prayed and you're not seen an answer to prayer and you wonder, you pray for others, they get an answer and you don't get and those tears the Lord is wiping away. Any, any, anybody want to share anything the Lord is revealing? Brother, I heard uh, sin. Only one word I heard sin. And I think the Lord is referring to John 16, 8 to 11. That uh, when he comes, the Holy Spirit, he will prove to the people, the world, that they are wrong about sin. They are wrong about sin because they do not believe in me, in Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Any, any, anybody else? Some revelations? Some I comments? got the word. Uh, I got the word pride. Pride, yeah. Brother, I thought uh, the deserving candidate for, for my kingdom. Uh, that we are the deserving Papa. candidate. Uh, it's only this much I got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Sometimes we think that we are, we, are, we are not deserving, you know. God says we are deserving. So believe that. Don't look at your weaknesses. Somebody uh, was written and showed that uh, I saw a globe, you know. You can ask what is the interpretation of that globe. Can it mean that you need to pray for the world? Can, we, can it mean that we, all of us should pray for the world? So when you see such images and symbols, we need to ask the Lord. Any, any Anybody want to share? Yeah, I got this phrase, uh, holy ground. So, holy ground. Uh, holy yeah. ground. Uh, brother, uh, Lord is healing someone who is having a stomach problem and uh, there is uh, someone is having a headache and God is healing this two person. Okay. And uh, God shows a vision uh, that is, uh, a, it comes to a junction and there are three roads. And there is someone who is uh, going to take a decision and there are many options. God says, you pray to the Holy Spirit uh, and, the, um, and to read the word of God. And God is going to lead this person. Amen. Okay. Yeah. Brother? So, yeah, yes. Um, it may not be a vision, but what you said is for me that I was in tears from morning, but now during the uh, praying in tongues and this one, I was uh, praying in, uh, with tears. So your uh, revelation applies to me, father, brother. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The tears were wiped out because not because of the word that we speak. Um, it's because uh, the power of God works in us. Uh, brother, that uh, revelation also is relevant to me. I mean, I don't have tears. I'm not crying. But uh, there is sorrow because um, I also have a ministry out here. And for whomever I pray for, it gets answered. But certain things that I'm praying for, it's not getting answered. And I have that sorrow. Not tears yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. the Lord is healing that area. One sorrow you feel inside you. Very soft, very soft sorrow. It's not a very heavy sorrow. And the Lord is healing you. Okay. The Lord is healing you. So you can be more, free more to serve the Lord. And at the right time, every prayer that you pray, the answer will come. I was getting some words as we were praying in tongues, you know, rivers are flowing. It was automatically some of these words were coming. And uh, one more, I was also uttering, there was one more sentence coming out, you know, power of God is manifesting. Ah, praise God. Somebody sent one chat message that, that there is a fire in the tongue. Amen. I, I also saw a vision of, you know, earth very dark, but there were some light in between. Like, um, uh, you know, amongst the darkness, uh, there was some light. Okay, okay brother, uh, we will close. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we'll wind up and we'll return back tomorrow. Yeah, we will return back tomorrow, friends. Tomorrow is a very important day. It's a feast of uh, birthday of our dear mother. So we will all go to church and thank the Lord for giving us uh, his wonderful mother as our mother. And also pray very specially for all the Keralites who are celebrating their Onam. Happy Onam to all the Malayalis. Uh, and, and even we Mangalorians are celebrating the Harvest Day. Okay. Tomorrow. So this year also came uh, in the thank you. Uh, day and uh, so we will all uh, come back tomorrow thank you and god bless you have a beautiful evening bye